today's session. So that will be made available on our YouTube channel a little later. But with that, I'm going to turn things over to Casey. Thank you so much, Daryl. Good afternoon, everybody. It is so great to see you all. Um, for some of you, this is the first time I've seen you. And for some others, the first time in a long time I've seen your name in a room. And it's so good um, to, to be back together um, each time we get to meet. For those who don't know me, my name is Development. Um, and I keep the Florida Library Youth Program chugging along. I would like to ask if you all would take just a quick moment, and if you haven't already, type in the chat which library you're from. Uh, which children's or YA book character you would like to go on an adventure with, if you could. Um, I think that would just be fun to know. Um, Today, we are going to just cover a few things. I don't imagine this will take very long, um, but there just seem to be so many things happening and so many updates that it just seemed a lot easier to hold a meeting than to try to hold on to information um, until I put out another newsletter. Um, so we are gonna go over some collaborative summer library program uh, updates because there have been some, some changes happening on the national level. We're also gonna talk about some flip here a little more local to the state, some of our updates and just some things that we have going on with FLIP in general. Um, and then we'll open up a big questions, comments, discussion at the end. Uh, but as Daryl said, of course, if you have any questions that come up or any comments that you wanna add to, please feel free to hit that hand raise button. Um, I always love it when my voice is not the only one going or you can put it in the So some updates, we uh, voted as, you know, all, all across the, the nation. Um, thank you to those who took the time to fill out the surveys and the polls to help me make sure that uh, when I put my votes in for future slogans and themes that I'm representing the things that you all want. So, your library, and that will be our adventure theme. So for those who are still relatively new in the whole CSLP summer library program, um, we, we work several years in advance. Phoebe, am I still cut out? Or am I coming across clearly? Still cut out? Yeah, Casey, I was just talking to Amy about it. I don't know what it is. It, it kind of comes and goes. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to make a quick, quick swap and we'll see if that helps. All right, can y'all hear me? Yeah, right now, that one, Casey, sounds pretty good so far. All right. Clear, but I don't think anybody has ever accused me of being quiet, so. All right, perfect, we will keep rolling then. Um, so what I was trying to say, and I'm not sure at what point I started uh, cutting in and out, um, but y'all can see on your sque screen, the 2024 slogan is adventure begins at your library and the 2025 theme is art. And for those who are still relatively new to the CSLP summer program, we vote and come up with the themes and the slogans several years in advance um, because it takes a long time for uh, the committees with CSLP to you know, pin down the illustrators that are gonna do the artwork and go through that process. And so, um, we start thinking and voting years in advance. So it's always kind of nice to be able to know what we have coming down the pike in future years. One of the other big changes is that CSLP has decided to retire the teen video challenge. Um, in recent years, interest has just been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And, um, and so, 
they just went ahead and made the decision to go ahead and retire that. But they want to find an idea to replace it. And so they want it to be sort of at that same big national level. And um, I know that you all are incredibly creative and I know that you all are very in tune with your teams. Um, so if you have any ideas that I can pass up to, CSL, please, up to CSLP, please feel free to submit that. Um, I've got a bit.ly link there and uh, whenever I send my follow-up email, I, you will also be getting a copy of this PowerPoint and you will also have a copy of the links. Um, so don't feel like you have to scribble it down right now unless you just really, really want to. Um, so they are looking for ideas on things to do to get teens involved. Um, I know one of the ideas that somebody threw out was maybe having like a bookmark contest where they could create bookmarks and whichever ones won were, would actually be put into the CSLP store. Um, so any ideas you have, uh, we want to hear them. The other thing, and I'm going to preface this by saying that this is not guaranteed, this is not currently in motion. However, I know that every year when you all submit your surveys to me, one common request I get is having materials available in other languages. And other state reps and other um, youth services consultants in other states are also hearing the same things um, from their library staff in their state. Um, CSLP would like to be able to do this. There's a lot of logistics that would have to be worked out. However, I figured that step number one would be them knowing which languages are maybe most in demand. And so I did create a little um, who work with populations that are out by, you know, outside the English and Spanish speaking populations. So if you have any um, of those additional language needs for materials, please, please, please submit that through the survey um, and I will make sure to gather those up and send them. Again, we don't have any guarantee that the CSLP will be able to pull together the resources to do this, but I figured, you know, it's, they have to know what resources they need in order to be able to figure out if they can make that happen. Um, and so, the you know, you all are the best sources of information, at least in Florida. Um, so, Again, um, you'll get these links later, so don't feel like you have to scribble down quickly, but that would be a good first step in helping them meet those needs. And for those who maybe haven't seen this yet, uh, CSLP is hosting their first annual summer symposium, um, and this will be done virtually, so it's kind of like an all-day training workshop. Uh, which is really cool and it, there's no cost associated with it anybody can attend um, i do know that they have a cap just because of um you know technology but i i believe their cap quite there yet so um you know this is a great opportunity to be able to get together with library staff in other states um and I'm sure if you can't make the whole day, you can probably pop in and out as well. Um, I will also make sure to send the registration information. It's on their website, um, but this is a great opportunity and I hope that we'll get a lot of people from Florida attending. Um, so they're, you know, they're gonna cover programming ideas. They're gonna talk about outreach and partnerships, which I know is something that you all are frequently asking for more information on. Um, they're gonna talk about promotion and marketing. Uh, so I, I imagine it'll be really, really good. And this will be the first time they've ever done this um, and hopefully not the last. And then some flip summer program updates. Uh, I sent out a poll a couple months ago trying to figure out if you all would prefer that I move back the summer program statistics due date to the beginning of September um, and overwhelmingly the answer was yes. Um, I had been getting a lot of requests, especially from our larger libraries, because they were running later into August with programming and they were having you know, a really hard time pulling all those together. Um, so the majority has spoken. So uh, for next year, 
Uh, those statistics will be due the beginning of September. This does mean that there is no wiggle room. I cannot bump, continue to bump it back in September. Um, otherwise, I can't get y'all your allotment early, uh, early-ish. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen is the statistics webinar, which is primarily been happening in April or May will happen around March this year to kind of give everybody a little bit more time between finding out which statistics we need and, and how to implement that into your programs. There will be changes this year. I'm still working through those changes, um, mainly because, you know, when we changed things a couple of years ago, we were having to react to what you all were having to change. Um, and for those who've been here a while, you know that we usually use these statistics to put into a formula to come up with your allotment amounts. And because we've had to change which statistics and how we're collecting these statistics, it has made that a lot more difficult. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how best to rework them so we're still getting the same information, um, but getting it in a way that we can actually then turn around and use it for those allotment amounts. Um, so I will say, even if you've been doing this five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years, when that statistics webinar does come around, I highly encourage you to either attend live or watch the recording because there will be some, some changes happening. One of the other big things, which I'm sure for those who've been around, you probably guessed this at this point, um, but again, we won't be having in-person workshops this year. I had to make that decision several months ago, and at the time there were just still so many unknowns about um, who would be able to travel, how many people could we fit in a room, and if we were limited on space, um, you know, how could we make that equitable? And there was really no good way to predict the future. Um, so we made the decision to go ahead and um, forego those in-person workshops this year with the hope that for summer 2023 we'll be back at it. Um, and again, for those who are fairly new to this, um, historically FLIP has sponsored in-person summer library program workshops and they are all-day workshops and they are wonderful and they're a chance to come together and you get to sit through training about summer library programming and do hands-on programming activities. Um, go through program planning exercises so that when you walk out, um, you actually walk out with some programming ideas that you can take back and, and implement. And we hire presenters to do it all over the state and we partner with our MLCs. Um, and so I, I don't know about you all, but I know I've been missing it the last couple of years. Um, and so I, you know, 2023, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll be able to resume those. But what we're going to kind of do, because I don't want to leave everybody high and dry, so what we're doing a little differently this year, um, number one, the CSLP symposium is one opportunity for you to go get some additional programming and training that is specific to the CSLP summer programming theme. Um, I will also be holding a summer library program webinar in January, so keep an eye out for that, um, where we'll go over, you know, the manual, we'll talk about some programming ideas um, and share those. And I'm also sort of working feverishly behind the scenes to try to create some additional resources and materials for you all. Uh, one of these I'm partnering with uh, our Florida Memory Program. Uh, the theme for next year, it, you know, is, is oceanography, which is just so perfect being in Florida. Um, and as a Panama City coastal girl, I'm particularly jazzed and kind of throwing myself into this theme. Um, but I'm hoping to create some promotional items that you all are welcome to take and use, as well as some programming resources that are in addition to the, the manual that we have um, so I'm really excited. So I am working to bring you all some additional resources. Um, I'm also planning to hold three brainstorming sessions because I know that people really like being able to get together with their colleagues across the state and just share ideas and kind of problem solve together. Um, and so we're going to have three of those again, and those will also be in January. I'm also meeting with the new program director at Project Wild, which is a wonderful program um, through our fish and wildlife 
where they actually have curriculum. And some of you I know were with me in October of 2019, which was one of our almost last in-person trainings before uh, we went all virtual, um, where we attended this day-long workshop and we got to learn about all these wonderful Florida-centric nature-inspired activities and resources. Um, and it was so much fun. And the wonderful thing is that they have one that is called Aquatic Florida. And so it focuses on, you know, the, the water wildlife. Um, and the great thing is that even for those who are maybe not sitting on the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean, um, you know, there's, there's water just about everywhere in Florida. Um, and so my hope is to partner with them um, to provide this in-person workshop around the state. Um, so I'm meeting with her on Friday to see sort of what their requirements are. I think before when we did this, we had to be able to um, guarantee that at least 10 people could be there. Um, and and it's, you know, it was held, at, we did it here in Tallahassee at one of our Leon County Library branches. Um, so if your library is interested in possibly hosting, um, please feel free to send me an email and reach out. Um, for those who were able to attend a couple years ago, it, it, was it, it was so much fun, wasn't it? Um, I know that the group that attended the one here, they were ready for another one before we even walked out the door. Um, so fingers crossed that we can um, we can get this this moving. Um, and the great thing is that these activities, you know, can go beyond summer. And Zedra said it had a blast. It really it was so much fun. It was probably one of the most enjoyable in person trainings I I had been to in a really long time. Um, the other thing that I do want to let you all know. Um, because I know that some of you, especially when it comes to summer programming, I know that some of you do both the children, youth, and the adult summer library programs, or I know that you get questions from your adult services people. Um, so I did wanna take a minute and just let you all know that we have actually hired um, a new adult learning consultant, and her name is Katrina Harkness. Um, and she started very, very recently, and so, um, for those who you know have asked me in the past, is there somebody who does what I do but for adults? The answer is yes, we do. We have one now. Um, and she comes to us from Florida Memory and she and I are already partnering, um, working on some materials and some resources for you all. Um, so definitely help spread the word that we do uh, have somebody now whose focus is adult learning um, and she's still um, and she just put her email address in the chat if y'all want to grab that. Um, so we're very excited to have her and I'm excited to see, you know, what how she and I can partner moving forward to really especially build out that adult portion of the summer library programming because I know that a lot of libraries are starting to really jump into that more and more. And so we are very excited. Um, Creating summer, I, like I said a, a minute ago, I am working on creating um, some social media graphics promotions that are sort of, you know, they're related to the summer programming theme, but they're a little more Florida focused. Um, and so right now, if, and I would like some feedback from you all, right now I'm focused on creating graphics for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Um, if I'm missing any other major social media platform that your library uses, um, throw that in the chat because I just want to make sure that I'm not missing something that you're using. Um, I know here at the Bureau we use Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, um, but I know a lot of libraries use Instagram as well. And Sarah said, perhaps a webinar could be set up for training with Project Wild, which would allow us to use the curriculum ourselves. Yeah, and I think that um, I know a couple years ago, they were only offering them in person. I do believe that over the last couple of years, they started to um, implement some sort of a virtual um, webinar 
out of necessity. Um, so Sarah, that is something I can certainly ask on Friday when I uh, meet with them. Crystal, are you scanning books into the chat? <laughs> um, to see, I know, I know in the past, you're okay, you're fine. That's just exactly what it looked like to me. Um, you know, in the past, because it was so hands-on, they were very, very focused on in-person training, but I'm sure like all of us, they've had to learn how to adapt. So I will certainly ask the question on Friday. Because um, the beautiful thing is that when we attended, they gave all of the attendees like this big curriculum book that had all the activities in it. And the wonderful thing is that they build these activities to um, fit in with the school curriculum requirements. And so even though as public libraries, we don't really have to worry about that like our, our school media specialist friends do, um, it's still really nice when we can um, when we can sort of, you know, re reinforce what, um, you know, what they're doing in the schools and sort of help, you know, in that way, kind of fill that gap. This project, it really, it's so much fun. Oh, we got to go out and do nature scavenger hunts and um, we did a whole activity on about bee pollination. We found out that some of our, some of our folks up here in the Big Bend area are poets. It was, you know, it really was such a good time. Um, so I'm excited that our, our theme sort of aligns in such a way that hopefully we can rebuild that partnership. Um, so just a general flip update. We do have um, a flip performers directory and y'all, it is looking a little sad right now because I have exactly one performer listed. <laughs> um, so there is, and again, um, you know, right now I've got the, the link right there to the web page and I will send this back out. I created a WUFU survey for library staff to submit performer information. Um, only library staff can submit this. We are not, um, we are not opening it up for vendors themselves to come um, because what I wanted this to be was library staff, staff recommending performers that they've really enjoyed working with. Um, and so that's sort of the, the vetting process there. Um, you know, I really, because I, I know that people have been asking for this, so I'm really trying to get it off the ground. Um, I do ask that if you have a performer to submit that you do use the form instead of emailing me directly, because I am asking for some pretty specific information to make it really helpful. Um, and I, I know a lot of people keep their own list, but I think some of the information that I have is probably not things that people would normally need to keep for their own personal records. Um, but I would really love to build this up into a, a really fantastic uh, document that's really useful to you all. Uh, Casey, uh, Megan asks, do they need to be in Florida or should we include virtual options? They do not need to be in Florida. They just need to serve Florida. Um, and you can absolutely include virtual options. Um, I, I want this to be very robust. Um, and I, you know, I think even who knows what next year is going to have, you know, is going to hold. And I, I know that a lot of libraries, even when they're back doing in person, they still want to be able to offer virtual options. Um, so yes, as long as you've had a good, you know, experience working with them, um by all means submit 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 i really really want to bolster up this list um and and that being said there's also an update form so if you know if you submit a, a performer now and let's say their email address changes in a year they can submit an update form or you know a library staff member can do that um but because i wanted this to be a semi vetted list um, because I, you know, I know some some folks have not necessarily had the best experience with some performers. I know that there are some performers who have been hired and then maybe they just didn't show up <laughs> or they showed up about four hours too late without, you know, contacting um, 
their library. Um, and so, you know, you all are really the best source of information. And I know that this is a common question is, you know, who's a great performer and we use the same folks we want to branch out. So, um, yes, so please, 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 I'm putting out the plea and the begging and, um, you know, it, I, I, it has great potential. So, um, we have not yet, I am in the process of scheduling the first children's services work group meeting. Um, and so I'm excited about that. I know there's a couple of you in here. Um, the meeting's coming, I promise. Uh, so once we get that kicked off, I'll be really excited to um, share what all uh, the work group starts working on and hopefully you all will start seeing resources uh, in the near future for that. So, all right, so let's chat. Um, that was a lot of information. Y'all asked some great questions, but I wanna make sure if you have any other questions about either anything I talked about or um, maybe something I didn't talk about that you just have a burning question. Um, Daryl just unmuted the whole room. So um, you can easily unmute yourselves if you have a question to ask. Um, just the, the standard disclaimer that if you're not talking, please make sure you are self-muted so we don't pick up um, any of the background noises or anything like that. Casey, it looks like Christine has her hand up, so I think she may want to ask something first. Or maybe not, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, it looks like an accident. <laughs> Any, anybody? Uh, Jacqueline says in the chat, they're looking forward to some options for January webinars, looking forward to when we can have in-person ones again. I know, I know people have been missing those in-person workshops. Well, I will hang around for another minute or two. Um, here's my contact information. Um, if you need to reach out to me and you don't have my, my contact information, it's all there. Uh, for those who are on Facebook, we do have a uh, Facebook group. It's a closed private group for Florida Library for Youth Services staff. Uh, it's called Flip Exchange. Um, it's not an overly active group. Um, which I think can also kind of be a nice thing because it's, it's not uh, hard to miss stuff there. Um, but I will say sometimes I get information, especially from CSLP, where they need a quick, um, a quick response. And sometimes it's so quick that I don't have time to get it through my communications process to get it out through my newsletter. Um, so there are times where I rely on that Facebook group to get uh, feedback quickly if need it be. Um, so I do recommend that you join us there if you're on Facebook. Um, Casey, we had a couple questions in the chat. Um, so the first one, Shirley says, where is Project Wild held? So it is held all over the state, and the, the great thing about it is that in any facility that we would like. I know a couple of years ago when I sat one up, um, they had to have, one of the caveats is they have to have one of their volunteer facilitators um, with somewhere within the area. Um, the way the program works is that they actually train, they send people out on these retreats where they get trained to become uh, a facilitator and then they're volunteers. Um, so as long as there's, you know, somebody within, within a reasonable distance. Um, and then the other requirement at the time was that we had to have at least 10 people. Um, 
I don't know if the requirements have changed in the last couple of years. That's what I'm hoping to find out on Friday. Um, so, you know, some of the things that they looked at was if you have a library that happens to be located near, um, you know, like for the aquatic Florida, you know, if you have a library that maybe has a retention pond or some sort of small, even if it's a small body of water, um, that would be ideal, but even if it doesn't, it's fine. Um, some sort of outside space I think was preferred because uh, I know we did several activities outside during the Project Wild one. So hopefully okay. if we can get enough set up, then we can spread these out across the state. Okay, next question is, will there be in-person adult workshops eventually? Yes, eventually. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're hoping for summer 2023 that we'll be able to go back to in-person workshops. Um, and I know that um, the last time we did them, we had five total, uh, one in sort of each MLC region. And so as long as things hold steady between now and, you know, this time next year, and I can get presenters, um, hopefully we're, we're back, we're back in service for in-person workshops for uh, 2023 is all together now is the slogan and it's kindness, friendship, and unity, maybe not in that order. So what a lovely theme to come back together in. <laughs> and then uh, Sarah asks, I am wondering when the codes to access the CSLP summer SRP manuals will be made available? So Sarah, um, Florida is a little different. Um, each library is responsible for purchasing online access with the allotment that I send out. Um, so touch base with whoever is responsible for placing um, your allotment order and see if they've already done that. Um, because once they place it, they should get that, that code. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. And again, if y'all have a mic, you are free to unmute and chat. Hi, I think I missed something. I saw Katrina Harkness's email in the chat, but I, I think you cut out for me. I didn't hear who she was and who should be contacting her. Oh, she's amazing she, and she's delightful. Um, she is our new adult learning consultant. Um, and so she is running, and this is a fairly new program for us. It was sort of a, um, a mixture between an old program and a new program. Um, and so she's our new adult learning program uh, consultant. Um, and her program is sort of, it's sort of half and half. Um, part of it is adult literacy and then part of it's adult programming and, and sort of those, op, you know, learning opportunities for adults. And because Summer Reading has um, adult programming, um, it's sort of opened up this really amazing opportunity for she and I to work together to really kind of bulk up the adult summer programming resources and, and offerings. Um, and so I know that, and I wanted to share her information uh, because I know that some folks in here do it all. They do, you know, the itty bitties up to adults. Um, but also I know that um, I've had you services staff get questions from their adult services um, staff looking for resources and information, um, specifically summer related. So um, if you are the person who does it all and you're wanting information about, you know, more adult learning opportunities or adult focused services, she's a great contact. She, um, you know, she's still getting settled in. Um, but yeah, so we're very excited to have her. And then Stevie made a suggestion for summer reading 2022, the Florida Public Archaeology Network. They have regional locations. We have a marine archaeology focus in the Pensacola area. 
Thank you for sharing that. We really, we have so many amazing resources in Florida for next year's summer, summer theme. I guess I'll, I'll throw it out there if you guys can hear me. I can hear you perfectly. So they're actually going to bring a project to, um, to our locations, all of our locations. It's called Shipwreck on a Tarp. They're actually going to show the kids how they excavate an underwater wreck. So they okay. have offices all over the, uh, the state. So, um, and they've been really responsive. I, from what I can tell, they partner with local universities. So our contact is actually one of the uh, professors at EWF. I think they're tired. Uh, tied in with our historic trust in the area and such like that. So um, if you guys have that opportunity, it's pretty cool. You can't see me right now, but I am completely geeking out over what you just said. <laughs> I am. Y'all, I had a very brief moment in middle school where I wanted to grow up and become an oceanographer. I think it's hard to grow up right next to the water and surrounded by water and not just fall in love with it. So, yes. Fantastic. Anybody else have any anything you want to share or any questions? Um, I'm happy to hang on. I, I can fill silence by going through some of my other contact things, but by all means, please feel free to, to butt in and ask a question or um, you know, let me know what I can do for you. If there's any, you know, if you have a particular need right now that you just need some extra information on or some, you know, additional training or, or what have you, please let me know. Um, I'm always looking for ideas. Uh, for those who don't know, I do put out a mostly monthly-ish <laughs> newsletter called Flip Forward. Um, you can subscribe to that. Um, it's also the list that I use for sending out any FLIP webinars, um, so it kind of does double duty there. Um, I just recently sent out a summer reading um, edition that just sort of shared little blurbs from what different uh, libraries did across the state. Um, and then I also have a FLIP web page, um, so especially if you're you're fairly new in your position and you're trying to figure out where to start, um, I've got programming resources on there, collection development resources. Um, you can also find the newsletter on there. So, fantastic. Well, thank you all again for joining me. Um, it's always great to be in the room together. And, and again, hopefully this time next year, um, we're in in-person workshops together. Um, and, you know, I know that I'm certainly missing those opportunities because I learned so much and it was always such a great time to connect with each other. But fantastic. Well, I know you all are busy, so, I'm going to hang on for about another minute or two, but I'm going to stop talking. Um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to throw them in the chat or to use the mic. Otherwise, I will see you all online soon, I hope, and have a wonderful rest of your week.